Welcome to the Core Women Podcast. My name is Dr. Summer Watson. I'm a doctor of psychology, podcaster, published author, coach, producer of documentary empowerment films, and empowerment seminars. This podcast is a special place for the hearts and souls of women. It is a place where women share their journeys, strength, resiliency, strategy, and passions. Today on the show, I'd like to welcome Marion Stewart, who is the author of Manage Your Menopause Naturally and 27 other books. She is known as the pioneer of the natural menopause movement, a world-renowned healthcare expert, and she has helped tens of thousands of women around the world overcome PMS and menopause symptoms without using drugs or hormones. In 2018, she was awarded the British Empire Medal and was recognized as one of the 50 most inspirational women by the Daily Mail. We have so much to talk about, Marion, and welcome. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Oh, I'm glad to have you. Thank you for joining me today on the Core Women Podcast. Well, I'd like to speak to you a, a bit about your personal and professional journey and how your passion developed into helping women understand, embrace, and naturally work through menopause. Yep. Well, my life changed unrecognizably when I was on maternity leave after having my second baby because my ex-husband was working with three other doctors and they were setting up the British Society for Nutritional Medicine and they gathered together 10,000 medical papers on the non-drug approach to health and because they didn't think I had much to do because I only had two babies under two um, they gave me the 10,000 papers aren't I lucky and I found 200 on PMS and I was so bowled over by the fact that you could handle PMS naturally that I put together a program based on those papers for my husband's clinic and we trained his nurse. And then the rest is history because we ended up having an absolute deluge of people, literally hundreds of thousands of women all around the world came for help with their PMS. And we developed a program that eventually we added to and did more research and found that women had low levels of nutrients and when they were corrected, we were helping women, well, 94% of the women were symptom-free within four months. And then as time went on, the medical papers started to be published on menopause. And so eventually we tweaked the recommendations and turned it into a menopause program as well, and then carried on helping both women with PMS and menopause. And now here I am all those years later, and we have helped hundreds of thousands of women all over the place to reclaim their well-being. And so my passion, uh, I suppose my horror is that women are left to suffer. And my mission is to stop all that and change the paradigm, particularly on menopause, because we know from all the surveys we've done on thousands and thousands of women that they regard menopause as the beginning of the end of life as they knew it. And whether it comes prematurely or whether it comes at the right time, or whether you end up having eight years of perimenopause that you weren't expecting, 96% of the women in our surveys say that they were unprepared for menopause, and two thirds of them say it robbed them of life as they knew it. And we know that one in four women are leaving the workplace needlessly after they've been competing with men, and probably at least another one in four are wobbling and having problems because they can't sleep, they can't focus, they've got brain fog, and they are just a shadow of their former selves. And it's not right because having helped women with menopause symptoms to completely be symptom free within the space of a few months and knowing that in the latest Mayo Clinic survey, only 7% of doctors and gynecologists said that they feel adequately educated to help women going through menopause. I am a woman on a mission to make sure everyone has sound science-based information that they can help themselves with so they can get not only overcome their menopause symptoms or perimenopause and get themselves into a much better place, but also after menopause, we are not protected by estrogen anymore and our low levels of estrogen send us our health plummeting and we're much more predisposed to things like osteoporosis, the bone thinning disease, heart disease and dementia. And we know from our research that you can prevent all of that if you learn how to meet your needs. So we're, as well as helping to deal with menopause and perimenopause, we're also looking to make longevity a much better experience. Well, I love your complete explanation of that. You wrote that menopause is too often treated as a problem to be solved or an illness to be cured, not the natural process it is. Can you speak to this? Because I think this would have 
a significant impact on the way we perceive menopause. Yeah, menopause is just a transition in a woman's life, like any other event, pregnancy, for example. And you can't, you start, it's got a beginning, a middle and an end. And that's what most people don't realize. And the end can come very quickly if you learn to meet your needs. So even on my six week program, which came about because I was treating women on a one-to-one -one basis for many years and my, with a five month program, and that helped 91% of them be symptom free. And then three and a bit years ago, I made four little films for Facebook on my phone. And within 12 weeks, over a million women had seen those films. So I was completely <laughs> inundated with suffering, needless suffering. And so I really feel that learning to have what I call a midlife refuel is the most important thing. And it gives women hope that this is it's not the end of life as you knew it. You haven't lost your personality, your self-esteem, the person that you were. You can get back even your libido as well as your brain function. And you can feel probably better than you can remember because we go downhill so slowly that we don't realize how far down we've gone until we come back up again. And so it's really about giving people the right information because there's so much wrong information out there. And it's very difficult when you're going through this transition and feeling bad to be able to go on to what I call Dr. Google and decipher what is good and what isn't, you know, where is there a vested interest and what's wholesome science-based information. For example, some of the products that you see on the market for menopause may look very pretty, but the research shows they don't even contain what they say on the label. And so that's mm -hmm. another way I feel that women are being duped. So having yeah. the opportunity, this, you pointed out, this was my 28th book, but it's actually my first American book. Ah, um, that's very exciting to have the opportunity to get the word out in the US where I now live to give women just information that they can put to good use. And it, this is like the manual for my six week course, because I decided obviously I can help more people on my virtual course than I can in my one to one clinic, but I still can't reach the masses. And that's where the book comes in. Yeah, and that gets me to my next question, which is a really important question and something that I think you're touching on here. Do you think we've been conditioned by both those women that raised us and our practitioners to view menopause as a condition or problem versus a natural process? And the second part of this question is, how have you been able to help practitioners or clinicians really understand and adopt this way of thinking? Well, uh, I think that um, if I take the second part first, I mean, we used to lecture to doctors and practitioners, but unfortunately there's been lots of budget cuts. And so it's very difficult. I've put the medical references in this book so that people can access the information and know there's all the sound medical science behind it. And as far as it being um, an illness, let's say, or something that's really life stopping, the advertising standards in the UK a while ago, a couple, couple of years ago, no more than that, they announced that menopause was a serious medical condition. And I was absolutely furious about that and we campaigned to overturn that because it isn't a medical condition it is literally a transition and we know from our research that very often women have got low levels of important nutrients things like magnesium iron zinc b vitamins essential fatty acids calcium vitamin d and when they're in short supply it will literally change the color of the lenses through which you see the world and it doesn't allow your body to work normally and so apart from the fact that you've got empty estrogen receptor sites, which you need to fill, and you can fill that with Mother Nature's estrogen as well. So it's a kind of double whammy that you need to address when you get to any time past 35, really, because your, your bone mass reaches its peak when you're in your mid 30s. And mm. it's a slow downhill from then onwards. Perimenopause is about eight years leading up to menopause and menopause is the average age of 51. And menopause is only one day. It's the day, it's the anniversary of your last period, unless you've had a hysterectomy. And then the next day you're post-menopausal for the rest of your life. And because we weren't living much past 50, 
a hundred years or so ago, it didn't really matter about all this. But now when we're 40 something is halfway for so many of us, this matters a great deal. And if we want to be in good shape and to really have a good quality life and be able to carry on working in the efficient way we were before menopause, then we need to learn to meet our needs. And that's, you know, it's the, so you're at a fork in the road when you get to menopause and you need to take some action if you want to feel well you need to be proactive and learn how to meet your needs it's not difficult doesn't take that long it's not uh, you do need to make some changes to your diet and lifestyle but it's not a life sentence it's very enjoyable way of doing things and some of the things that you need to do are really temporary while you're having what i call the midlife refuel i love that phrasing the midlife refuel I like that because it really takes it outside of a condition, so to speak. It puts it into a frame of process and a second phase of life. We are not, (laughs) we haven't lost. It's just a a second phase of life. So I think when I read this book and I went through this book, I'm thinking this is a great manual. This is a great guide to getting prepared even, even before you get there, let's start getting prepared and doing that paradigm shift, that mind shift of it's a process, not a condition. Yes. And I think when, because I come from a psych background, when I look at this from that type of perspective, I'm thinking there is an emo- a big emotional component. And many women that I've, I've talked to about menopause they won't even go get seen. They don't want to believe that they're going through it. They, they feel bad. They think they're losing something. There's so much emotional drain to this that they won't even seek help or support for it. Exactly. And they're not thinking straight. I mean, I know from all the years when I was helping women with PMS that, that this Jekyll and Hyde syndrome, where for two weeks prior to their period, they would be anxious and irritable and angry and depressed. And, you know, all those things you associate with mental illness. But when they get to the other side of their period, they miraculously become themselves again. Well, that's because they've got underlying nutritional deficiencies. And when you correct those, it has a really normalizing effect on your brain chemistry and lots of symptoms. So women, for example, in our latest survey on 1100 women in the UK, they went to see their doctor and 31% of them were actually given or 37% were given antidepressants for menopause. And 84% of those didn't feel it was appropriate because they didn't have clinical depression. And it's just, it's not right that this is put in the mental health bucket because it isn't, it's the empty bucket. These women are literally running on empty. They're firing on two cylinders instead of four because they've got low levels of nutrients and empty estrogen receptor sites. So if we can fix that, then everything sorts itself out and the symptoms disappear. They literally disappear. Right. Many times they do. And actually, you know, it is frustrating looking at, practitioners. And that's why one of my first questions was, how do we expose more of our practitioners to what you're saying and what you're doing? Because we don't want them to go directly to the, I'm going to check the box because this woman's having mental health issues. We want to look at, do a full range assessment and say, ah, aha, this could potentially be, you know, what's happening in their process, in their life process. So how can we help support them? not treat them, but how can we help support them? And let's do our own evaluation so we can see where they're the deficient in regards to their B12, their D, their zinc, their iron, all these various things. And I'm sure through your surveying, you did an emotional component, a, a deficiency component, all these various uh, survey questions to identify what in specific you really need to address with not just the patient, but the clinician. So with all that said, Manage your menopause naturally. Tell us about the book and how we could go through it best. Okay, so what I did was, as I said, when I had the million women who saw my films, I had to get organized to create something to help groups of women. And so I created this six week course and it was meant to be six bite sized modules with all the science that I used in my five month program. And I thought I'd just be teaching women how to use the tools and meet their needs. But we found that even in six weeks on our virtual course that we were turning women's lives around. 
And we've been doing that for the last few years, both in and out of the workplace, which is really exciting. So we're reaching a lot of women and helping them to feel better, reclaim their well-being and be more productive. So what I did with the book was I set out to write the manual for the course. And so it's got the six weeks. So for somebody who's starting from the beginning, they can go right the way through the six weeks. That's the first part of the book. And it, each week will give them a bit of extra. So in the first week, for example, I'm talking about fast tracking with all the common symptoms, things like brain fog and anxiety and panic attacks and aches and pains and low libido and all the different hot flashes and night sweats, insomnia, and giving some self-help information so they can get started straight away. And then in week two, I move into helping them to detect nutritional deficiencies because mother nature shows us on our skin, hair and nails that we very often got low levels of nutrients. In fact, I've got a big article in part of the Daily Mail. So um, you can go online and find that. It's called Menopause Face. And it shows you, as I do in the book, what the signs of vitamin and mineral deficiency are. And once you've, correct, once you've detected those, then it gives you the tools to correct them. And so that helps to get the first part of the process underway so that you're having your refuel. And then in week three, I focus on mother nature's estrogen because at the time of perimenopause and menopause, we've eventually got empty estrogen receptor sites. And so we need to fill those with naturally occurring estrogen. We can do that with diet and some supplements. And then we can literally fool the brain into thinking that we've got normal circulating estrogen and that's how the symptoms switch off. So that's the, the next thing. And then I go on into in week four, talking about supplements and the science-based supplements that have been through properly conducted clinical trials so that people can choose those and know how much to take for their symptom sets. And then we move on to positive mindset and we, um, we, we look at cravings and how you can lose weight without dieting. And then eventually putting your plan together for the longer term so that by the time you get to the end of the six weeks, and there's plenty of space at the end to keep your notes as, it, as you're creating your program. And then in the next part of the book, I'm talking about future proofing your health. So things like how do you protect your bones, your heart, and your memory in the long term, and all the different complementary things you can do like exercise, relaxation, because, for example, doing formal relaxation can reduce your hot flashes by 50 to 60 percent. So it's just knowing what to do, depending on your symptom set, to get yourself into really good shape. And then we've also got recipes and menus and meal plans for meat eaters, fish eaters, vegetarians and vegans. And if you hate cooking, then there's fast options and shopping lists and all sorts of everything with all the medical references and a science roundup. So I've tried to put everything in one place. And it's also good for practitioners and doctors because it's got all the science in there as well. So obviously I do give talks to practitioners and practitioners do refer patients to us to our six week course, which and people can come to my website, marionstuart.com and just have an assessment, it's just a free assessment. And I've also got a midlife refuel club where they can come and get access, unlike the Facebook group, which I have making the midlife switch. In the midlife refuel, we've got all a whole library of content so that people can access it because Facebook doesn't have a memory and it's just difficult to find the information. So there's tons of way that people can get help and I do live sessions. So if you get the book and you want to just come and ask a question, you can get your questions answered. And if people want extra help because they're suffering really severely, we've got the six week course as well. So there's something for everyone, no matter where you are, whether you're looking at prevention, whether you're perimenopausal, whether you're unfortunate enough to have had a surgical menopause and you get thrown into it, or even if you're, you're postmenopausal and you're wondering why the symptoms haven't gone off, and I've had some women in their 70s who've still got symptoms, then you can learn to meet your needs at any given life stage. And I feel pleased to have had this opportunity to get the information all in one place and make it accessible to women so that they can stop this needless suffering. Oh, this is beautiful and brilliant because it sounds so thorough. And I did go through this book and it is a really thorough book. And I wish I would have had it at 34 when I actually had a, uh, a hysterectomy. <laughs> 
So it would have been really helpful for me. So, and I didn't have a resource like this. So to have a resource that's this thorough, that talks about exercise, that talks about deficiencies, that gives you an idea. And I love that there's also examples by other women in here about how they are feeling, what they were doing, what's going on with their body. So those examples are really nice to have too, because it's like, you're not alone. Exactly. And, so <laughs> and that's why I put them in there. In fact, in all the books I've written over the years, I've always put case stories in there. And those okay. women are, I'm always so grateful to them for sharing their personal stories. And they don't get anything in exchange for it. In this case, I gave them a book, but obviously I gave them help and got them into a better place. And one of the women in the book um, is a, an interesting woman because I met her at a menopause conference a couple of years ago. And she was one of the co-authors of the Government in the Workplace Report on Menopause, which was a review on over 26 years of 104 medical papers. And when I read that and did a review of it, I realized they were mostly talking about the problem and not the solution. And that was right. why we decided to take our program into the workplace. But she is a woman who is a professor and she thought she had early onset dementia and she was really scared. She had acne on her face as well for the first time in her life. She was depressed and achy and had bowel problems, constipation. And I invited her to come on our program. And honestly, within the space of six or eight weeks, her symptoms had gone. And a few months later, she instead of leaving the workplace, she was actually made head of department at her university. And another one of the women is um, she's the CEO of Virgin Care. She's a doctor. She's been a doctor for 20 years. And she said that within three weeks of going on the program, her symptoms have gone and they've never come back. So we partnered with Virgin Care and we're now helping women in the workplace in that company and other places as well, because it's such a big issue if you leave it on. And not only for the women themselves, but it's also massive economic situation. Forbes, for example, in 2019 said that this is costing $810 billion globally in the workplace through lost productivity. And it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. And, and because I'm a research nerd, I love that you include the research articles and the information in the back of the book. So that's really exciting. If there's one thing you want women to take away from your book, what would that be? I think the first thing is hope that they are, as you say, not alone and that they can turn back their biological clock by learning how to meet their needs. And that's the key thing. This is not a, a life sentence. You, you're not on the scrap heap when you get into your 40s and 50s and beyond. <laughs> Do you know, there's life after menopause. It can be amazing life because suddenly these women get turbocharged. And there's a little film on the homepage of my website with eight of the women that have been through the program. And when you watch that and see it, it says far more than my words can. But in fact, when we made that film, there were 10 women there that day telling their stories. And I actually cried because I'd forgotten what they felt like when they were at their worst, because I now only know them as well women. And each one of them feels like it's been a miracle and that they've got their life back. And that's the key thing, really. It's just a big, hopeful situation for women who are willing to make a few changes to their diet and lifestyle. Well, I love that. That's so important. And as we come to the end of the interview, my last question is always, if you were to leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would those be? I think to love yourself and just trust that you can get better and feel better than you can remember and take one day at a time. Don't expect a miracle because it's not, you're not going to wake up the next day feeling better. In fact, sometimes when people give up caffeine and a few other things to start with, they can feel worse <laughs> in the first week. Um, but just come and join the community and be with other women who are going through this process and start laughing and loving life again, because you will. We know that by week four on the program that we see the women smiling, the hair starts shining, their skin is glowing, and they can see that there's a big light at the end of the tunnel. And that's really a legacy for every single woman. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Marion, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. If you'd like to connect with Marion Stewart, go to www.marionstewart.com. If you need a strategic empowerment coach, contact me. 
If you want to tell your story of empowerment or how you have reconstructed your life to drive change, send me a video or an email of your story providing permission to use it on my social media platforms. If you want to be featured on my podcast, reach out to me at info at corewomen.com. I want to hear from you and to get to know you. You are now part of the Core Women home. Let's get to know each other. Let's learn from one another. Please follow Core Women on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please let your women friends know about this podcast. If you write about Core Women in your social media posts, please hashtag Core Women. This is all about women. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about Core Women, and please stay tuned for continued growth of the Core Women movement. Let's grow and drive change together.